All across Nebraska, you can find plants living in a wide variety of ecosystems. From a short grass prairie to a river's edge, or oak savannas to vast sand hills, there are many types of habitats in our state. These spaces are each special in their own way to the plants that call them home. But have you ever paused and really looked at a plant? Check out this one. What qualities do you notice? Does it look different from other plants that you've seen before? Today we're going to take a deeper look at how plants in wetland habitats adapt and change to meet the challenges of their environment. But before we go too far, what is a wetland? Wetlands are a habitat made up of specialized soil, water, and you guessed it, plants. The challenge with wetlands is that they are constantly changing. Sometimes they are very wet and become flooded, but other times they dry out. Unfortunately for wetland plants, they can't just grow legs and walk away when the going gets tough. So how do these plants survive their never-ending environmental changes? Let's take a peek into the world of wetland plants and all the ingenious structures that they have that allow them to call wetlands home. Every plant growing in a wetland has its own special structures. Not sure what a structure is? Take a quick look at your hand. Is this a structure? The answer is yes. Your hand is a structure on your body. The important thing about structures is that they each have a function. A function is what it can do. So what can we do with our hands? Raise them in a class? Throw a ball? Maybe even snag a tasty taco? All great functions of our hand, the structure. If we think back to plants then, what types of structures do most plants have? Can you name a few? Roots, stems, leaves, flowers, and seeds are all great examples of structures that can be found on plants. When it comes to wetland plants, there are a few species worth a closer look. Let's dive in and check out the creative structures and functions that allow plants to thrive in the face of challenging wetland conditions here in Nebraska. Look at this. This first plant is called saltwort. It lives in saline wetlands, saline meaning salty. While other plants wither away in this salty type of soil, saltwort thrives. The succulent-like stem and leaf structures hold in water, much like a cactus does in a desert. Saltwort also has a root structure called a taproot. This single root structure taps deep into the earth, reaching water and nutrients found in the groundwater even when the topsoil is dry and crusted. Though this plant is listed on Nebraska's endangered species list, the saltwort has pretty cool structures that function to help them survive in the drier conditions found in saline wetlands. The more we conserve saline habitats, the better chance that saltwort will stick around for a long time to come. Another plant that tackles the challenging soil found in wetlands is the cattail. While plant roots don't breathe air in the same way humans do, they still require oxygen to survive. So imagine what it's like living in soggy wetland soil with almost no air to breathe. The roots of cattails are often submerged underwater, making it challenging for them to absorb oxygen like normal roots would. Here's where the cattail leans on its stem for support. The cattail stem structure actually takes in air and sends it down to the roots and rhizomes to help make up for the lack of oxygen. This allows them to breathe easy while also giving them the stem support needed to get through floods and heavy wind. One more plant that is near and dear to the hearts of Nebraskans everywhere also battles saturated wetland soil with unique structures. Does anyone know what our state tree is? If you guessed the eastern cottonwood, you were right. The cottonwood is an amazing plant that is often found growing near to water, usually in wetlands. Because wetlands often flood, this makes it hard for the plant's roots to breathe. The cottonwood has very shallow roots to ensure they have better access to oxygen. As flooding waters in wetlands recede, 
Trees with shallow roots will be the first to dry out and recover. What an amazing strategy to tackle the ever-changing conditions of wetlands. When flooding waters rise, they can often flow quickly through wetlands, causing erosion as they head towards the lowest point in the watershed. These speedy waters could damage many of the plants living there, but our wetland plants were built for this. Take a moment to inspect the leaves of the cattail, or even this arrowhead plant. What shape are the leaves? Do you notice how thin and pointed they are? This leaf, a structure, has a strategic shape that helps when floodwaters rise, allowing water to flow quickly by without damaging them. The ultimate goal of living things is to create more of themselves through various methods of reproduction. But how does this work in a habitat that is constantly transitioning from flooding to drying out and everything in between? Cattails have yet another creative structure found underwater at the base of the plant called rhizomes. These potato-like tubers are the main way that a cattail can spread, sending out nodes and creating more of the same exact plant. That's why when you see cattails, there are usually a bunch of them and not just one. They also produce a hot dog-like flower. Did you know it was a flower? Cattails actually self-pollinate, and after those seeds have had time to develop, they puff out and float away on the wind or water to start new cattails growing somewhere else in the wetland. And remember the cottonwood Nebraska state tree? Aside from having super roots, they also have the fluffiest seed structures around. Often these seeds will disperse far, far away, landing on the water surface and floating to the edge to plant a new tree. This next plant is sure to blow your mind. At least that's what it does with its seeds. The plant known as jewelweed grows on the edges of wetlands, kind of like the cattail. In midsummer, they begin to develop flowers that almost look like orchids. They are beautiful structures. Once the flower is pollinated by an insect or even a hummingbird, they develop into an oval-shaped fruit pod structure. Inside, seeds. And what does that plant want to do with its seeds? Spread them or disperse them far and wide. Accidentally brush up against this seed pod and this plant's seeds will go flying. What an amazing adaptation. Who knew that plant structures could do such ingenious things to survive? Or that one plant could have multiple structures to help it survive in wetlands? I mean, imagine if we tried to plant a carrot in a saline wetland, or a cactus in a wetland that floods often. Would that plant survive? By now we know that to endure the challenges thrown their way, wetland plants need some pretty special structures that function to do some pretty amazing things. Each plant is unique, and each one can be affected differently depending on the conditions of the habitat. While some survive really well, others might not. It all comes down to the unique design of the plant. Whether you live in a wetland in Nebraska or not, plants everywhere have incredible structures that help them survive. What plant structures do you notice in your own environment? What type of environment are you exploring? Is it your neighborhood or the area around your school? Every day is a new chance to make observations and notice the little details around us. In this case, we hope you take some time to check out the surprising structures of plants that you see each day. Maybe you'll even head to a wetland and discover the uniquely specialized plants that live there. Either way, it's a great opportunity to check out some truly amazing adaptations. Good luck!